Continuing with a topic that we covered this week on the podcast, we're going to take a look at processing for microphones uh, inside our Axia uh, console engines and uh, the way that we tend to do it around here. Uh, disclaimer, uh, this is a very personal preference driven video. Your results may vary depending on how you like to process your microphones. But for uh, for our case, we're going to kind of walk through how we do it. So to do that, because in this room, we typically are using uh, an Aphex 230 voice processor. I'm just going to, the first thing I'm going to do is just bypass all of the processing on this. We're going to use it just as a preamp uh, and a high pass filter. So We'll turn everything off on that processor. So now we're just flat, straight into the uh, straight into the Axia console engine. And so we've got we've got a channel defined here on this board. In our case, it's called Mic Two, um, uh, and we're going to uh, push the Options button here and scroll through. You can see on the screen we have various sections of control here. We have um, we have the section where we would normally pick which sources on the channel a back feed section where we would choose if this was a codec of some kind, what we were returning to the source. We have an EQ section, a pan section, uh, and a dynamic section uh, followed by some aux sense. So we're mainly interested today in the dynamics and EQ section. So the first thing I wanna look at is the EQ section. So we, we would, we would uh, spin one of the soft control rotary knobs on the control surface and then uh, click on it on the, uh, in our case, the F1 control knob. And it'll continually across the bottom of the screen give you the options of what your, uh, what your knobs do in terms of your specific surface. So uh, the EQ is currently bypassed. So to fix that, I'll push the middle button and turn it on. And the first thing I'm gonna do is the low frequency area. We're gonna take a look uh, around 80 Hertz or so. We're going to give a listen to this as we do it. And, uh, we've high passed this thing around 80 Hertz. So I'm just going to put a little bit back in, uh, the bottom end here to start with. And we'll see what we like with that later. There's two DB or so. So then we'll, we'll move on over, uh, to the mid frequency section. And uh, we'll just get something going here so we can hear our adjustments. I typically find with these SM7s that somewhere around two to 300 hertz, I like to put a little bit of a, of a dip because we're, we're getting some presence boost already off of this mic with, the back, with a switch on the back of it. I just like to take some of the mud out of the vocals here. And uh, that's sounding better. Let's go over to the high side. This should become a shelf, uh, a high shelf for us here how do oh how do we make that be a high there we go so now we'll uh, just dial this back until we get somewhere where we're relatively happy two two all right uh, I think for now I'm fairly good with this EQ it's pretty mo it's pretty modest not a whole bunch of crazy adjustments have been made there uh, so we will exit out of the EQ screen and then using the rotary knobs again we'll go down and select the dynamic section and in here we have a gate expander a compressor and a de -esser, and then the makeup gain of that whole system because as we compress we're going to need to make up for that uh, with some gain so the first thing i'm going to do is come over i'm going to do the compressor first um whoops whoops we're going to do the compressor first uh so let's go over here activate the compressor and i typically started about a three to one three and a half to one ratio and then we'll go from there and then talk at a normal at a normal uh, voice and so you can hear already the compressor is working that's a lot of compression we're on my peaks we're getting a 10 DB or above average which is pretty intense hey one two 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 and as we increase the ratio you'll hear even more craziness can you hear the difference there the additional compression that's happening that's 16 to 1 we'll come back around 4 to 1 hey hey i'd like to get about 8 so 6 to 8 or 10 db of compression on my loudest peaks so we'll set it right there and then the uh the axia surfaces have a freeze function too that i can turn on which I like because it then holds the compressor where it was when it was last active. Okay, so I think that's sounding better. Let's listen to it real quick with the, with the, with the compressor bypass. This is my voice, and then this is my voice with the compressor engaged. 
Okay. So let's now let's scroll on over for now to the uh, expander gate section. There's two two settings here. There's threshold and depth. Uh, this is kind of uh, processing 101, but the threshold section just sets the level of input signal that the gate needs to, to see to be above in order for the gate to be open. So we'll dial this back, but we won't do anything for us right now because we have to set the depth or how much gain reduction do we want the processor to do when we haven't reached that threshold. I don't like to go way down. I, I typically go 12, it depends on how loud your room is, how much background noise you have in your room, but I, I tend to go between 12 and 20 dB down. So in our case, let's just start at 16. And we can see that we think at a normal voice, the gate is opening and closing properly when we're threshold is about minus 20. You can see if we go up higher with this threshold, the gate doesn't open enough on my normal speaking voice and it starts to clip off my words. So we have to bring this down until we have a normal speaking voice opening the gate, but background off mic noise is gating much better. So that's how we determine the threshold and depth of the mic. I think that's a pretty good, I think that's a pretty good run at it. And then I'm just looking at the VU meters and realizing um, here in a second, let's scroll over. Uh, back to the to the output gain section and let's just add let's just add a couple db of makeup gain to make up for all of the things that we've done here with our uh with our compressor and everything else we should probably do the deesser while we're in here i don't use them all the time it depends really depends on the mic and the setup but it's similar to the compressor in that we we're picking a uh we're picking a ratio how much to one compression that we're going to do of frequencies that are in the ds range so that is every db above the threshold is going to reduce the signal by how many db so if a four to one ratio is going to decrease by four db for every db above the threshold um so We'll see how that's gonna work for our S's here. This is the DS or active. Um, this is, yeah, it, it, again, it depends on mic and studio, but I don't think this needs a whole lot. Uh, I think that sounds pretty good. So let's just real quick, that was a very quick run through this, but let's just real quick bypass, um, bypass the individual uh, components and listen again to how this would sound. So. There we've turned off. We've turned off all mic processing now, and this is straight in, no processing at all. Here's the DS are back on. Uh, here is the gate, the gate back on. In fact, I can already hear things I don't like. I'm going to back that off a few more dB so it's not cutting me off quite as aggressively. And then we'll go ahead and turn on the compressor, and that's really where the bulk of your uh, of your stuff comes back. So let's go back one level here and go back to the EQ now that we've done a little bit more work there, because I now I do think I'd like this to be a little less uh, harsh and maybe a little bit warmer down in this uh, down in this area. Hey, one two 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 two. Hello 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 one two hello one two. Hey hey. Generally speaking, uh, that is my workflow, and then much more tweaking from this. That's the workflow that I use for processing a microphone with uh, just using the built-in channel controls uh, on our Axia control surface. Thanks for watching.